On July 1, 2025, astronomers spotted the third ever interstellar visitor streaking toward the Sun, just as a US government shutdown threatened NASA's ability to tell the world what happened next. 3. I Atlas swung through perihelion and flared brighter, spewing exotic chemicals and displaying mysterious, uneven acceleration, behavior that is already breaking the rules we thought interstellar comets followed. Now Congress is demanding NASA's raw data, and scientists are locked in a race against missing records, bureaucratic silences, and a fading target. Why does so much ride on understanding these eccentric signals, and what could be lost if scrutiny arrives too late? On July 1, 2025, a faint, fast-moving object appeared in the nightly data stream from the Atlas Survey Telescope at Rio Hurtado, Chile. The discovery team, led by astronomers at the University of Hawaii, flagged the new comet for its steep inbound trajectory and unusual speed. Within hours, a flurry of Slack notifications spread across the network of survey astronomers. Early orbital calculations showed the path was hyperbolic, with an eccentricity just over 1.0, too high for any object bound to the Sun. The excitement was immediate. This was only the third time an interstellar visitor had been caught entering our solar system. Archival searches kicked off before sunrise. By July 2nd, the team had recovered faint pre-discovery images from June 14th, hidden in the Atlas and Zwicky Transient Facility archives. These early detections let the astronomers plot a more precise orbit, confirming that the object was not just a comet from the distant Oort cloud, but a true interstellar traveler. The comet received its official designation, 3I Atlas, joining the shortlist after 1I Oumuamua in 2017 and 2I Borisov in 2019. As July turned to August, 3I Atlas brightened as it approached the inner solar system. The Atlas team, now joined by observers from Europe and North America, coordinated regular tracking. Each week brought sharper astrometry and more refined predictions for the comet's encounter with the Sun. By mid-September, the trajectory placed perihelion on October 29, 2025, at a distance of 1.35 astronomical units, about 126 million miles from the Sun. The observing plan adapted to the comet's rapid pace. Ground-based telescopes tracked its inbound motion through late October, while NASA's Goddard and JPL teams prepared to switch to space-based assets as the comet's plower. Elongation dropped below safe limits for Earth telescopes. Despite the looming US government shutdown, essential orbit calculations and tracking continued uninterrupted. Data flowed into the Minor Planet Center and global coordination channels anchoring the timeline for a rare, real-time interstellar encounter. The Atlas Discovery Team's quick response and careful orbit modeling set the stage for a global campaign. With perihelion approaching, the world's telescopes were primed to capture every possible detail, knowing that the window for study would be brief and the science unprecedented. Congressional attention arrived almost immediately after the shutdown announcement, sending a ripple through the scientific world. On October 4, 2025, Representative Anna Paulina Luna formally requested that NASA release all imaging and raw data about 3I Atlas to the public. Her letter, entered into the congressional record, argued that discoveries of this magnitude belong to everyone, not just those with institutional access. She pressed for transparency, citing the public's right to know, especially when the findings might alter humanity's understanding of its place in the universe. NASA's response was careful, shaped by the realities of a government shutdown. Public Affairs acknowledged Luna's request, but pointed to legal and operational barriers that slow data releases when federal funding is frozen. Despite these constraints, NASA made it clear that certain functions could not pause. Internal tracking and orbit determination for 3I. Atlas were classified as essential. At Goddard and JPL, mission-critical teams kept working, calculating trajectories, updating predictions, and coordinating with international partners. The global observing campaign, involving dozens of observatories and research groups, continued without interruption. Even as official press bulletins dwindled, the Minor Planet Center and private communication channels kept vital updates moving. 
Real-time tracking data from JPL remained the reference standard for astronomers worldwide, ensuring that no crucial observations were missed. The shutdown exposed the delicate balance between operational necessity and public accountability. Luna's office issued a follow-up statement, emphasizing that public trust in science depends on timely, open access to information. The situation forced agencies to weigh the need for security and accuracy against the growing demand for transparency. For the orbit teams, the mission was clear. Keep the science moving, no matter the administrative climate. For policymakers, the challenge was to maintain oversight without disrupting essential work. As days passed, the world watched for signs of strain. Would the process hold, even as politics threatened to slow it? The answer, at least for now, was yes. The backbone of scientific continuity, dedicated teams, global coordination, and a commitment to open data remained intact. The episode sharpened the conversation about who owns discovery and how quickly knowledge should be shared, setting the stage for policy debates still to come. On October 29, 2025, as three I Atlas swung around the sun at 1.35 astronomical units, NASA's space-based assets caught a sudden surge in brightness. Within minutes, coronagraphs and ultraviolet spectrometers registered a sharp increase in light output, far exceeding earlier predictions. The event triggered a rapid response across mission control. At JPL, analysts watched as real-time data showed the comet's coma blooming outward, driven by a brief series of jets erupting from the nucleus. Water vapor dominated the spectral readings from the solar and heliospheric observatory, along with planetary orbiters positioned for solar conjunction, which revealed a complex chemical signature. Carbon-based compounds, particularly carbon dioxide, registered at levels nearly double those typically seen in solar system comets. Fainter signals from cyanogen and simple organics traced the jet's geometry, suggesting venting from distinct localized regions on the nucleus. Throughout the 10-hour window around perihelion, the comet's light curve showed rapid, erratic fluctuations, likely reflecting the rotation of an uneven, layered body with active surface patches. No metals above instrumental thresholds were detected despite the intensity of the outburst. Multiple teams, including those at Goddard and ESA Solar Physics Lab, confirmed only upper limits for iron, nickel, and other heavy elements, consistent with the expectation that interstellar comets formed around faint stars would be depleted in heavy metals. The absence of these lines reinforced the focus on volatile-driven activity as the main driver of the comet's behavior. Astrometric tracking during and after perihelion added a new layer of complexity. Orbit solutions from JPL Solar System Dynamics Group began to diverge from purely gravitational predictions. The comet's path showed measurable non-gravitational acceleration, peaking in the days after the outburst. Analysts traced these deviations to asymmetric outgassing, jets acting like thrusters, nudging the nucleus off its calculated course. To match the observed acceleration, modelers estimated that 3I Atlas shed at least 13% of its total mass in a matter of weeks, an evaporation rate rarely seen even among the most active comets. Spinning nucleus appears to explain the jet geometry inferred from both light curve modulation and high-resolution coma imaging, with venting concentrated on one hemisphere. This uneven mass loss not only altered the comet's trajectory, but may also have shifted its spin period, a detail still under review as new photometric data trickle in from post-perihelion observations. The mass loss and trajectory changes demanded a full reworking of the dynamical models. JPL Orbit Determinist Group, working through the shutdown with essential status, began a round-the-clock effort to refine the venting hypothesis and update global tracking predictions. No evidence suggested anything other than natural cometry physics at work. Yet the scale and irregularity of the acceleration made 3I Atlas a testing ground for new models of interstellar material. The need for more data and for careful calibration of every measurement became urgent. As the science teams pressed ahead, the pressure grew to share results quickly and openly, even as operational constraints slowed official releases. The raw evidence, volatile rich jets, erratic motion, and massive transient mass loss now sat at the heart of the debate over how to interpret and who should access 
the story of this rare visitor. Avi Loeb, chair of Harvard's astronomy department and founder of the Galileo Project, issued a public appeal on November 2, 2025. His statement called for the immediate release of all raw and processed data on 3i Atlas, arguing that only full transparency could resolve the mounting speculation around the comet's unusual behavior. Loeb's request circulated through academic channels and major science outlets, pressing NASA and partner agencies to make their datasets openly available for independent scrutiny. He emphasized that the credibility of the scientific process depends on public access, especially when discoveries touch on fundamental questions about the nature of interstellar objects. Within days, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, AARO, responded with its own clarification. In a brief memo on its official website, AARO stated that 3I Atlas had been thoroughly reviewed and classified as a natural interstellar comet. The office found no evidence of artificial origin, no signatures of technology, and no grounds for security concern. The memo underscored that the object's non-gravitational acceleration and volatile-driven jets were consistent with established cometary physics, not with unexplained phenomena. This public statement echoed findings already circulated by NASA and international observing teams. The timing of Loeb's appeal and the subsequent AARO memo sharpened the debate over how scientific discoveries are communicated in an era of rapid public scrutiny. Loeb's call for open data drew support from transparency advocates and segments of the astronomical community who pointed to delays in data release caused by the ongoing government shutdown. Advocates argued that the public, having funded the missions and telescopes, deserved real-time access to information as it arrived. In online forums and academic op-eds, Loeb warned that withholding data, intentionally or not, could fuel misinformation and undermine trust in the scientific process. NASA's science teams reiterated their policy of releasing data once calibration and peer review are complete. Agency spokespeople pointed to operational and legal requirements that slow official publication, especially during periods of limited staffing and funding. They stressed that the raw tracking and orbital data for 3i Atlas remained available through the Minor Planet Center and that essential findings were being shared with the global research community as quickly as possible. However, high-resolution spectra, proprietary datasets from space-based telescopes, and some internal calibration files would remain embargoed until the shutdown ended and standard review procedures resumed. AARO's memo helped settle some of the more sensational claims circulating online, drawing a clear line between natural cometary activity and unproven speculation. At the same time, Loeb's advocacy kept the spotlight on oversight and access. The episode underscored a growing tension at the intersection of science, policy, and public accountability, a tension that will shape how agencies, researchers, and lawmakers approach the next wave of discoveries. For now, the official position stands firm. 3i Atlas is a natural visitor from another star, and its story will be told through the data once the data are released. As November 2025 began, the International Asteroid Warning Network, IAWN, took command of a sprawling, meticulously scheduled observing campaign. Global logistics became the daily challenge. With 3i Atlas, now nearly 300 million miles from Earth and fading fast, coordination required rerouting observation schedules and data flows. The European Space Agency stepped in as a critical hub, while NASA's public channels remained sluggish during the US shutdown. University observatories across Europe, Asia, and South America filled in the gaps, logging telescope time in hour-by-hour -hour blocks to ensure continuous coverage. The campaign ran from November through January, mapping the comet's retreat in visible, infrared, and radio wavelengths. Each instrument had a precise role. Large ground-based telescopes tracked the coma's shape and brightness, while smaller scopes, often operated by skilled amateurs, focused on rapid photometry and polarimetry. Amateurs in Poland and Australia, using custom-built spectrographs and backyard CCD upgrades, captured changes in dust-grain alignment that even professional arrays struggled to resolve. 
amateur observers uploaded data nightly to a shared campaign log, and those uploads sometimes revealed subtle shifts in the coma's polarization before the major observatories could confirm the trend. The observing plan called for overlapping coverage in multiple bands. Multiband observations meant infrared arrays measured the cooling of ejected gases, while radio dishes hunted for faint emission lines from rare molecules. Polarimetry, once a niche technique, became essential for gauging dust structure as the comet faded. Each night, campaign leads in the IAWN Slack channel reviewed incoming data and adjusted priorities in real time. When weather or technical issues hit one site, a partner on another continent stepped in, sometimes within minutes. This decentralized approach proved resilient. Even as US data releases slowed, the international network kept the science moving. The result was a continuous multi-wavelength record of the evolution of 3i Atlas, built from hundreds of coordinated efforts. By January, the campaign had logged thousands of hours and terabytes of data, all tied to a comet that would soon slip beyond even the most sensitive instrument's grasp. Agency communications officers faced a steady stream of questions as the observing campaign pressed on. With the comet receding and the public still waiting for high-resolution spectra and imaging, NASA issued a clear commitment. All calibrated datasets from the 3i Atlas campaign would be released once operational clearance resumed. This pledge came in a formal statement from the Office of Communications, emphasizing that the agency's data policy remains unchanged, even under the constraints of a government shutdown. The process, they explained, is not simply a matter of flipping a switch. Each dataset, whether from ground-based telescopes, solar observatories, or international partners, moves through a series of checks, calibration, quality assurance, and legal review, especially when embargoes or proprietary periods are involved. Spokespeople from both Goddard and JPL acknowledged the backlog created by limited staffing and frozen funding. However, they reassured the scientific community that essential tracking data had continued to flow in real time and that all research-grade products would be posted to public archives as soon as possible. The Minor Planet Center, which operates under international mandate, had already made astrometric and orbital solutions available, while embargoed datasets from space-based campaigns were queued for release pending final review. The agency confirmed that this would include all Level 1 and Level 2 products, raw and processed spectra, imaging, calibration files, and reduction pipelines, ensuring independent verification by researchers of every measurement and model. In a written statement, a NASA communications lead put it plainly, we are committed to full transparency. As soon as we receive operational clearance, all 3i Atlas data will be released to the public without exception. The assurance was echoed by campaign partners at the European Space Agency and several university observatories who pledged to mirror the datasets and maintain open access for the global community. The pledge to publish is more than a bureaucratic milestone. For scientists and citizen observers alike, it means that the story of 3i Atlas will not end with a press release or a single paper. Instead, the complete record, raw numbers, spectra, and images will become a resource for years to come, enabling deeper analysis and new discoveries long after the comet itself fades from view. Today, the world's telescopes stand ready for the next interstellar arrival but the debate over open data is far from settled. As Congress pushes for transparency, the scientific stakes rise because every fragment released shapes how we understand our cosmic neighborhood. The universe doesn't pause for red tape. Our response and what we choose to share will define the discoveries yet to come.